New research suggests a breakthrough in the treatment of some brain cancers. Doctors using the polio virus to treat aggressive brain tumors call glioblastomas report promising results. Senator John McCain has this type of cancer, and so did Senator Ted Kennedy. Of the 61 patients treated in one, stu in one study, rather, 21 percent were still alive at the three-year mark. Now, that's compared with just 4 percent of patients who receive standard cancer treatment. 60 Minutes has been reporting on this trial at Duke University over the past three years. Four years ago, Debbie Puffer was told she had at most two years to live. Then she got the polio treatment in this trial, and everything changed. I mean, there were days that weren't as great as others, but I, I didn't even get depressed. You know, I just kind of kept pushing on, pushing on, pushing on. Um, I thought, geez, maybe I'm cured. Our Dr. David Agus leads the Westside Cancer Center at the University of Southern California. David, good morning. It's remarkable to hear these figures. So tell everyone how this treatment works. Good morning, Nora. Yeah, it's certainly very exciting. You know, millions of people around the globe are affected by viruses, from HIV to hepatitis to Ebola. And the knowledge of viruses has translated to a big advance here in glioblastoma. A catheter is placed into the brain in a person with glioblastoma. And this is after standard treatment of radiation and chemotherapy. And virus is infused. And this polio virus it likes to go to neurons, and particularly brain cancer cells have the sensor, the receptor. It's accumulated there, and then the immune system says, oh my gosh, these cells are strange, and they start attacking them. So the immune system attacks the glioblastoma. And what you're seeing here is that three years, at the best cancer centers in the country, three, four percent of people are alive with this aggressive form of brain cancer. In this study, 21 percent. It's not 100 percent, but it's a dramatic advance in the treatment of this disease. Mm. Shooting the, the polio virus into your brain sounds very dangerous. How risky is it? Yeah, I would not do this at home, Gail. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's certainly risky, as any treatment is. But unfortunately, at this stage in disease, uh, you're willing to take risks because the patients may have weeks to months to live with this form of brain cancer. But it causes inflammation, and that inflammation, sometimes in the beginning, they gave too much virus and actually killed too much of the cells at once and caused seizures in the patients. And so the key is kill a little bit at a time to hopefully get a significant benefit for the patient. David, do you do it after those other treatments, chemotherapy and radiation? Yeah, John, that's the key, is that, you know, standard treatment works. Chemotherapy and radiation buys time with this disease. And then uniformly, the disease recurs and its ugly head comes up again. And this is for that recurrent disease to treat it. And this really is the first major hope in treating recurrent glioblastoma. David, since you're a cancer expert, I want to ask you about this new Harvard study that just came out on flight attendants that showed that they have a higher prevalence of every cancer that was examined, especially breast cancer, melanoma, and non-melanoma. What's going on? Yeah, so this is a questionnaire that was given to flight attendants. They were 80 percent female. And the questionnaire showed that compared to controls, these are other people who are age match and similar uh, distribution, that there was more cancer. Was it their lifestyle? They have very strange hours. They're up at night. They're up very early in the morning. Was it the fact they're exposed to carcinogens and fuel and other things on the plane? Or was it the ionizing and the UV radiation they're exposed to when they're 30,000 feet in the air? We don't know. There's an association here. I wouldn't change flight patterns yet, but these big data studies are going to start to come out as we see these. And it's hard to know whether it's association or causality. The, the, tra the, 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 the challenge is to actually prove what's causing things. So this is an initial data set. Hopefully more data will give us answers. And, and when they give us more answers, Dr. Agus, we'll have you back. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, David.